Wadikap. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, Prime Minister Yingak, can I firstly just uh, thank you for uh, welcoming us on what is a two day official visit here to Thailand? Uh, Sik Jean, can I acknowledge you and the work that you're doing for ITU? Uh, to all of my fellow leaders who have joined us and delegates who have come from around the world. Interestingly enough, actually, this conference, I think, reaches into the two powerful drivers that we in New Zealand see as transforming our economy. So the first of those is Asia and the fact that we see such a burgeoning middle class emerging from Asia, uh, which is a powerful driving force for our economy uh, and the goods and services that we sell uh, here, not just in Thailand, but right across the region. The second thing we see is very transformational for our economy is ICT and the relevance of uh, this conference is why I'm sure it's attracted so many people uh, to uh, attend today. So before I talk a little bit about the government's response to that and the impact that we see, let me give you a thumbnail uh, sense of New Zealand if you don't know our country. Uh, from a population perspective, we are pretty small. We're four and a half million people. Uh, geographically, we're the size of Great Britain, so we have two large islands, predominantly about 1,600 kilometres long. Uh, we're an awfully long way from everywhere else in the world, about 11-hour flight uh, from Bangkok, where our nearest neighbour is Australia, where we are three hours away. Uh, we are um, the home of the Rugby World Cup, so if you follow such things, uh, we are doing well there, and we're hosts of the Cricket World Cup in 2015-16. We uh, are growing at around about 3% a year. The OECD has us as one of the fastest uh, growing economies in the developed world. Uh, as a government, we anticipate being back in surplus by 2014-15, and we have one of the lowest levels of government debt in the developed world. So for New Zealand, we've seen ICT as a mechanism for um, combating what we see as the tyranny of distance and the capacity to lift uh, both the interaction of New Zealand and New Zealanders with the rest of the world. So as part of that strategy, the government has been involved in a very significant PPP um, to roll out ultra-fast broadband across the country. That's no mean feat because, as I said earlier, uh, we're not a highly populated country, although we're 84% urbanised. Uh, and so that has involved New Zealand, uh, the New Zealand government spending a bit over a billion dollars to roll out fibre to 75% of homes across New Zealand. And for the rest of the uh, country, we are rolling out um, a much faster form of rural uh, broadband. Uh, that billion plus uh, US dollars is being matched by the private sector uh, who are in partnership with us and uh, we are on track to meet that objective uh, over the course of the next few years of ensuring that three quarters of all of New Zealand homes and the 33 largest towns and cities in New Zealand have fibre to the home. There are a number of specific objectives around that fibre program. So one of them has been mentioned actually by the SEC Gen this morning, and that really is in relation to education. Uh, so we are ensuring that every school in New Zealand, of which there is about 2,550 schools, is wired up to ultra-fast broadband, has unlimited data caps, and that we have a device policy for all of New Zealand children. The reason for that, of course, is that the international research, as you probably know, very strongly argues uh, that um, ICT is one of the great um, mechanisms for lifting educational outcomes. And so for New Zealand children, we want to make sure they have access to world-class education, uh, and we're using ICT as a form of doing that. Secondly, for our businesses, increasingly what we're seeing for a country which is dominated by uh, exports of food and agricultural based products, we are seeing the services sector emerging very rapidly as um, uh, ICT allows us to use uh, our services sector based in New Zealand to sell services to the rest of the world. 
And obviously as a way of communicating, uh, then it's been a very powerful form of doing that. So the government's been highly involved in that program uh, and our aim is to ensure that New Zealanders are, are wired to the world. We see uh, a number of uh, both opportunities and challenges. So uh, Prime Minister uh, Yingluck made the point uh, earlier on about the fact that the world uh, doesn't have equal access uh, to the internet. So I thought I might just um, inform you a bit of a project that's been undertaken in New Zealand. Some months ago, Google trialled in New Zealand something called Project Loon, and the aim of that was really using balloons as a form of um, satellite-based uh, access. Um, if that is successful, then on a very cheap basis, that would allow um, the world to be connected to the internet uh, despite their remoteness uh, or uh, their, their relative low levels of income. So it would be a very cheap form of ensuring that we have ubiquitous um, distribution of internet services around the world. And so for a lot of developing and emerging nations, that will be a very powerful device. From New Zealand's point of view, we're also considering not just the opportunities, but some of the threats that come uh, from expanded ICT. Uh, they include cyber security, uh, where the government has been working very um, assiduously at ensuring that we protect the intellectual property that is both developed in New Zealand and of our major government departments. We are also giving um, due consideration to the protection of our children, uh, because we believe that is uh, very important, and to ensure that cyberbullying isn't something that uh, takes hold in our schools and our communities, and the government is um, in the process actually of passing legislation to upgrade its laws to allow the protection um, of our youngsters uh, and to ensure that the government, um, through the judicial system, can take action uh, against cyber bullies. So we think uh, this is a very important conference. We think it's uh, an opportunity for uh, the world to become connected uh, together and for us to work together. And from New Zealand's point of view, uh, we are um, a country which is very focused on ICT. We're seeing more of our graduates uh, at university studying in this field. We're seeing the emergence of a lot of small companies in New Zealand uh, which are de developing uh, programs and, and uh, projects uh, which they can sell to the world. And we think it's a very exciting way for a developed economy like New Zealand uh, to have a greater uh, global reach than otherwise had been the case. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity to uh, give you a sense of what's happening in New Zealand. We wish you all the very best uh, for your conference. Uh, can I also finish just by uh, also expressing my uh, deep concern and um, for the people of the Philippines. Uh, we had intended this to be a uh, official visit not just to Thailand but also to the Philippines, uh, but for obvious reasons um, that's now not possible. Uh, but the New Zealand government has been actively involved in both the distribution of aid and deploying some of our defence resources to assist the people of Philippines as they go about the recovery from the terrible typhoon that they've suffered. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity to be here and we wish you the very best for the remainder of your summit. Thank you.